What's going on? It's Corey Vanderplu at Corey Photo on Twitter and Instagram. Today I'm going to show you some tips in Photoshop that I use for almost every close up portrait. Let's just jump right in. One of the first things I like to do when I start working on an image after I crop it is to make sure that it's symmetrical. So, what I do is push Apple R and I start bringing in guides at uh, some special points like the shoulders, where the center point is, so I can make sure she or he is dead center the bottoms of the eyelids, the tops of the eyelids, so you can see if you need some rotation, uh, eyebrows, you know, really any points that you can use to make sure that it's symmetrical. But as long as you have a few going horizontally and one down the center, that's usually what works best for me. So now you can see I just need to get those eyes a little bit more even because that's the most important part. You can mess around with the shoulders to balance them and bring them back, but messing with the eyes is a little bit more complicated. So you want to start with the eyes and make sure that they're lined up. From there, you can see the shoulders are a little bit off. So this is me just using the liquify tool, shift apple X and making sure that they're balanced. And I just keep going in and out of liquify to make sure that they're balanced. So now I'm going to use another guide for the top of the shoulders. And it's just small movements going in and out of liquify. You don't want to go too drastic. You want to be small, subtle movements. making sure the collarbones are lined up. You can still see I'm a little wonky here on the left. So let's try it one more time. You can see it's just small, tiny fixes, nothing crazy. And you can see that she's right down the middle. You can see that the collarbones are a little messed up or just a little off center here. So now I'm taking a big brush. I'm really just gonna slide that over very small. You see, it's just small things like this that make symmetry just so appealing to the eye. I honestly believe that the more symmetrical an image is, the more your eye will be attracted to it. So I always start with symmetry. It's the first thing I do. You can see when I flip it on and off, there's a big difference and it just looks so much more pleasing to the eye. Your eyes always drawn to whatever the simplest shape is. And that's what I always try to do. Simplify, simplify, simplify. Next is flyaways. So what we're going to do is make a new layer, turn our crop off, and then just using our brush tool, I want to sample the color that's around her hair by holding option and clicking. Low opacity around 37 and then just start painting it in. Painting around the hair being as crude and as rough as possible. And not only is this smoothing out the background to make the background more simple to get any weird gradients out of there. It's also eating in at the flyaways and minimizing the flyaways. So as you work your way around the head, just take your time and slowly chip away at it and make it as smooth as possible. You see the background, big difference. And you can see it's eating away in the hair. You can already see before I start cleaning it up that the main pieces that I want to keep are very apparent and the flyaways that I don't want to keep have almost disappeared. You don't want to get rid of them completely. It would look weird and fake. So what you're gonna do now is create a mask and with your brush tool at 100%, you're just gonna paint back over the hair. Push your X tool to flip it back. Now you're just gonna paint very simply and crudely back over the hair and then we'll go in for another layer of detail to finesse it. And as you go, you make the brush smaller and change your opacities if you need to, but here you don't. And then we're just going to paint in the broad strokes, just the chunks that we want to be remaining visible. And just go in, take your time, small brush, and paint everything back. And then do the same thing on the other side. Take your time with it. Go in and use the, and just paint in the big chunks. I'm holding here shift click to get straight lines, but this is again, this is just me being crude and I'll go in and I'll finesse. Here you can see, just paint this back just a little bit, getting rid of those hard lines. And you can see before and after, it made a tremendous difference. Again, it's just simplifying the eye, not getting rid of it completely because it would look weird and fake just enough so it doesn't become a distraction. That's really all you want. If anything distracts from your eyes, then you should get rid of it. Peeling back the layers just like an onion. All right, next step is under the eye circles or the dark circles under your eyes. You can see 
that they're a little apparent here. My lighting didn't really help. And also the fact that I put so much contrast in to the image, that also doesn't help. It really brings it out. So what I do is I like to do a little cleanups around first. I do not use the healing brush to get rid of these. You don't want to lose the texture and the pores under the skin. All you want to do is lighten the shadows and darken the highlights. This can even it out, balance out the shadows and the highlights and make it look very smooth. You get it to a certain level just so the skin looks perfect, any bibs and bobs and little things that distract you, and then I go into my dodge and burn. You want to hold shift apple in, make a new layer for DB, and make sure you hit soft gray, 50% soft gray. And now you can use your dodge and burn tool, which is the O tool. And all you want to do is take the burn tool and just paint it in where you see highlights. Very simple. Wherever you see that it's a little bright, paint it in. Just bringing down the highlights so it makes things a little bit more even. It's just small, gentle movements. Don't try to go too heavy with it. And always just try not to linger on one spot. Try to work your way around the face. And every so often coming back with fresh eyes to work on the circles. From there, you can use the dodge tool and then just small exposure again, something under 10%. Just start painting in where the circles are, the shadows. And all you're doing is lifting those shadows. Again, you're just evening out the skin complexion and that will give the illusion to perfect skin. So wherever it's dark, paint light. Wherever it's light, paint dark. And as you can see, it looks way better. It's still natural. You can still see the light hitting your face naturally. You can still see every single pore you don't see any softness. It looks perfect and realistic. And that's what we're going for, realism. You can always go a step further if you want. If it's a fashion image, you can always go much further and really even it out. Depends how hard you want to simplify, but this is more of a portrait, so I would like to leave as much detail as there as possible. When it's all said and done and you have the rest of your treatment and continue on, you can get a nice finished image looking something like this. If you want to see how I do my color tones, how I do my grain, how I do any other step through the process, check out the other videos in the link in my description. If you like this video and want to know more, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. My name's Corey Vanderplu at Corey Photo on Twitter and Instagram. Happy shooting.